welcome Carl Rogers. Oh, hello, hello. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. So, Carl, why don't you start off with telling us where you're from? <clears throat> well, I used to live in Oak Park, Illinois, and I actually went to the University of Wisconsin. But, um, yeah, I was a professor there for a little while, actually. Wow, University of Wisconsin? You must be pretty smart. I don't want to brag or anything, but I was one of only ten students picked from the University of Wisconsin to go to the Beijing World Student Christian Federation Conference for like six months. It was, it was amazing. It was like one of the best experiences of my life. I got so much out of it. Incredible. Wow, that must have been a really remarkable learning experience, especially for a college student. What did you say you studied again in college? Well, I initially studied theology, and as one of my studies, I worked as a pastor in Vermont for a short time. After that, I started studying clinical and educational psychology and went to the University of Columbia. You are so accomplished. I can't imagine going through that, much, that many years of school. Is there any way you were able to fit a social life in that schedule? Well, let me tell you, when I finished school, I married Helen. You know, Helen Elliot. And my parents hated her. It was against their wishes, you know. But did it anyway, because we're bad. Well, I can imagine the two of you must have been very happy together. Now, I know you're best known for your contribution to therapy. Can you tell us a little bit about your work? I developed the client-centered or non-directive therapy, which they now call it the Rogerian therapy, which I guess is after me. What do you mean by self-reflective? You see, it centers around being supportive and not reconstructive in the therapy process. People should be self-reflective and analyze their own problems. I was so successful in this theory that I actually set up the counseling center at the University of Chicago. So the self-reflective concept means that when people go to therapy, the therapist shouldn't be there to tell them what to think or how to feel, but more so that they should be the facilitator in giving them the tools they need to learn it on their own. You see, it's kind of like riding a bike when your parents wouldn't tell you or make you ride the bike the right way, but more so they would hold on until you learned yourself. Wow, Carl, that is incredibly insightful. Now, I hear that you worked with Abraham Maslow for a while. Can you tell me what the two of you did together? Maslow and I worked together for a number of years developing the humanistic branch of psychology. Humanistic psychology is a branch of psychology that focuses on helping people reach their full growth potential and having their needs for love satisfied. What came next? After that, I branched off and started working on my own thing. Um, the unconditional positive regard is when people have a full understanding and full acceptance of themselves and the people around them. Rarely do we listen with true understanding, real empathy. Yet listening of this very special kind is one of the most potent forces for change that I know. Now Carl, I know that you're dead and all, but what have you been doing recently to influence the world of psychology? Well, I'm a very accomplished communicator, that's what I consider myself to be, and I've helped change psychology and therapy to be more about the personal relationship between the counselor and the client. I've put an emphasis on honesty and the destructiveness of manipulation. Well, Carl, that's all the time we have for today. Let me tell you, it has been an absolute delight having you on the show today. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to interview you. I know that you have a very busy schedule of being dead and all. Oh, nonsense. The pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much for having me. See you next time on Kate's Corner. <laughs>